So you might be new to computer science or an intermediate software engineer and have heard of machine learning and AI. You might have seen some crazy model generate some cool images from text or just see how Tesla's autonomous navigation system drives around and you know that it is based on machine learning. And now you also want to work on such cool projects, but you don't really know where to start. So in this video, I'll try and give my best suggestions on where to start, which steps to take, and to explain a bit more about what machine learning engineering really means. In particular, I'll start talking about the language that I will recommend. Then I will go into the spooky section of maths and theory for machine learning, and then I will talk about practical applications of machine learning and what you can do to get better at that. So with that said, let's just jump to the first section. So straight away, the language that I would recommend is Python. There are a lot of machine learning specific languages like R or Julia, and you can also do machine learning in JavaScript or even C. But Python is just the industry standard. And when applying to machine learning engineering jobs, the probability of working with Python is very high. Also, the Python community is very large. There will always be someone that can help you, and there are so many people developing modules for specific tasks, also specific machine learning tasks, that you can use freely. For example, there are those machine learning frameworks that you potentially know like PyTorch or TensorFlow, but there also are already new ones like JAX, for example. And this availability of the machine learning frameworks is just absolutely important. And by the way, my favorite one is PyTorch. And as you probably know, you can do a lot more with Python than just developing some machine learning models, which is very, very important, as we will see in a bit when discussing the process of working on a machine learning project. But first, let's get to the machine learning theory and math section. And the question that everyone asks is, well, I'm not that good at maths. Do I really need it to be a machine learning engineer? And in general, the answer is no, you don't need maths. It just depends on the task. But in any case, knowing the maths just really helps. But as mentioned, it really depends on the task. Will you be able to just use some predefined model like a decision tree, feed it some input data and then have it predict some recommendation, for example, in recommender systems? Yes, you will be able to do that. And for that, you don't need any maths. So let's look at another example. Let's say you have some medical images with damaged tissue or not damaged tissue and you want to train a neural network. And for that, you have to define a loss function. Of course, there are already, already implemented loss functions that you can choose from, dice loss, cross entropy loss, whatever. And let's say you choose the dice loss. But when not really knowing what the loss function does or the maths behind this loss function, you can't really fine tune. For example, you won't really know what the difference between the Tversky loss and the dice loss is. But with this Tversky loss, for example, it allows you to put more emphasis on avoiding false negatives, which in the sense of medical images is perhaps even more important than having a balanced distribution of false positives and false negatives. Why? Because, well, if there's a false negative, the doctor won't go through every image and see if there is a false negative or not. But when there is a false positive, it will look at the image, it will see, well, that wasn't a real damaged tissue, so ignore that. So I just hope that this quick little example shows you that understanding the maths doesn't only help you in a theoretical sense, but also helps you in a practical sense. But of course, it's still very important to know the fundamentals, to know what the differences between the models are, to know what model might be advantageous in your specific task than another one. Recommender systems, for example, want decision trees because of their property of good of being able to have a good overview of what the model actually does and stuff like that. So therefore, I will now get to the little roadmap that I would recommend when starting to learn machine learning. And the first step I would recommend is learning about Bayes' decision theory and then parameter estimation. When you have understood that, you'll then go into linear discriminant analysis and then to linear regression. Now, those models perhaps aren't the state of the art and won't be used for autonomous navigation or something like that, but they are a very good introduction to machine learning and convey the idea behind what such models actually want to do and what they are. And those are just a huge mathematical equation that, are, that is optimized via some iterative training or a closed training. 
So after understanding what machine learning is and what parameters are, I would recommend looking at the bias variance decomposition because that will give you a very good feeling about what it means to overfit and what it means to underfit and what it means to have a very good model and what the term generalization means and just it's very important and useful. After that, we can go into the bit more advanced machine learning models. For example, decision trees or random forest and then support vector machines. Support vector machines will probably challenge your maths a bit because really understanding them will be perhaps a bit difficult and require some good linear algebra knowledge, but this is a actually pretty powerful machine learning model. So up until now we had supervised learning, meaning we have input data with a label and those pairs are used to train the model. But what if we don't have any labels? So for that, we have something like clustering, for example, that is a method for unsupervised learning. A specific algorithm would be the K nearest neighbors algorithm. That's the next thing that I would recommend for you to look at. And after that, you can go into reinforcement learning. Some keywords for that would be value iteration, value learning, Q iteration, Q learning, and then I would get to neural networks and really look at the fundamentals of neural networks. 3Blue1Brown, for example, has some cool videos about neural networks. And after that, you can just look where the flow of life takes you. See what interests you, see what is useful for your particular application. And regarding neural networks, there are just so many different architectures for specific use cases. Convolutional neural networks, general generative adversarial neural networks, recurrent neural networks, um, I don't know, graph neural networks, transformer neural networks, just so much. So towards the end, I got a bit lost perhaps, but this roadmap is a good start into understanding what machine learning is and learning about different machine learning approaches. And all of this might sound scary, but to calm you down, let's first look at what such a machine learning project process might actually look like. Because probably most of you don't necessarily know what it means to develop out a machine learning project. And there's nothing wrong with that. You probably have an incomplete idea of what it involves or what the majority of the work you will be doing is. So let me briefly break down what such a machine learning project might look like. And the first step for such a project will probably be defining the goal or understanding what the actual target for your machine learning model will be. So the most basic question you have to ask yourself is, do you want a regression model, so a model that predicts a absolute value? Do you want a classification model that classifies some data into specific classes? Do you want your model to give some recommendations? Do you want your model to be as understandable or explainable as possible? And so on. Then you get to the probably largest part, data collection and cleaning. Do you want to have some data points with labels? Well, you will have to collect them from somewhere, be it from the internet or some other sources, and you have to clean them. You have to see that they are as well accurate and re representative as possible. Or in terms of reinforcement learning or deep reinforcement learning, you will probably have to deal a lot with the simulation that you're working with and having some sort of interface that communicates the data of the simulation to your code that you can then feed into your neural network, for example. After you have collected all this data or have access to the data, you have to pre-process the data. Do you want to augment the data, for example, when looking at images, blurring the data, distorting the images a bit to be able to generalize better? And then you get to the actual model selection part. Then you can recall all of your theoretical knowledge and remember which models are available, which are suitable. And in that area, you will also just read a lot of research if you have some novel implementation. Uh, something that isn't really common. And that's really the cool and researchy part. And then you have to start the training, right? Have some sort of hardware that you can run it on. Then you have to evaluate the results of your model that has been trained or test the results. And after that, you will see that it will probably not be ideal. Then you have to tune the model, change some parameters, add some more components to your model. And that will be a constant loop until you are happy with the results. So you see that those model selection and model tuning parts where you perhaps really need to understand the theory behind your machine learning model is pretty small. And that is pretty normal in machine learning projects. That means that there is a lot of software engineering and data engineering surrounding the actual machine learning part. Which leads me to my final section where I give a few tips or suggestions for the next steps regarding the practical applications or practical work in machine learning. And the first most general tip that I have is to get good at Python and get to know its modules. 
know how to use dictionaries, which you will be using quite a lot probably, um, know how to format and store data using pandas, for example, or NumPy. Understand how inheritance and dundum methods work to really get better at PyTorch, for example, and understand how the interfaces it provides work. Speaking of PyTorch, look up different libraries that there are for machine learning, for example, PyTorch or scikit-learn. Then try implementing the machine learning models that I've discussed in the roadmap, for example, support vector machines or uh, random forest with scikit-learn, and then get to implementing neural networks using PyTorch. And I recommend doing that while learning the respective theory. For example, when learning about random forest, you can implement it from scratch or just using a library that provides the random forest algorithm and then train it on some data and see what the results look like. But those are still pretty machine learning model specific steps that you can take, which are really important. But when it comes to working on a larger machine learning project where you have to do some uh, data augmentation, data collection, data cleaning and so on, it doesn't really cover that area. But the biggest tip that I can give you that pretty much involves everything above from data acquisition, cleaning, augmentation, model selection, learning how to implement a neural network, for example, is working on projects. Be it, a, be it on a project at uni, be it uh, working on a project at work or on a personal project. By working on such a project, you go through the whole journey and have so much practical experience and gets to apply the theoretical knowledge that you have in a practical environment. I, for example, work on two projects this semester, one for autonomous robotic navigation using deep reinforcement learning and one for medical image processing using convolutional neural networks. And I actually document this machine learning process for both projects and I have a playlist for you that you will be able to click up here in a few seconds. But yeah. At one point, there will always be the theoretical understanding that you have to have and the skills for actually implementing your ideas. Regarding the project that I'm doing again, in the beginning, you have a research phase where you read a lot of papers, get the theoretical understanding for your application and then get to implementing. So it is always perfect to have a good combination of both. As a final little disclaimer, there's never one perfect way of doing anything. Those are just the suggestions and this is just the roadmap that I would recommend and I hope that would help you. And if it did help you or you just found this video interesting or insightful, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more future videos. So with that said, as always, thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.